Hi, welcome to this professional stock trading course. I'm Adam Koo. And in this course, you're going to learn the exact skills and strategies on how to trade stocks like a professional, how to achieve consistent profits so you can create another source of income for yourself or you can grow your savings at a much higher rate of return so you can build your wealth a lot faster and really reach your financial goals a lot sooner. And I can tell you that if you are committed to master these skills, to apply what you learn and to practice, you soon have a life skill that's going to guarantee you a source of income for the rest of your life. So if you know nothing about the stock market or stock trading, let's begin with lesson one. So let's start with the fundamental question. What is a share of stock? So if you buy a share in Facebook, what are you actually buying? Well, you're buying the right to owning part of the company and its profits. So before you buy a share in Facebook, you've got to ask this question, how many shares are there in total? So Facebook, for example, has 2.95 billion shares outstanding. That's the total number of shares that are available in the market. So if you were to buy, uh, for example, 295 million shares, you would own 10% of all the shares. You own 10% of the company and be entitled to 10% of all the profits. If you're like most retail investors, you'll not be able to afford that amount. That amount, right? You maybe buy 10 shares, 100 shares, 1,000 shares, and you can start with as little as one share. So currently, one share in Facebook is priced at $177. And of course, these prices change every single moment, every single day. So if you take the total number of shares and you multiply this by the share price of a share, you get the total value of the company, which in this case is $501 billion. And this is known as the company's market capitalization or market cap. So Facebook's one company. There are a total of 7,000 companies listed on US stock exchanges. And the three main stock exchanges would be the New York Stock Exchange, NYSC, the American Stock Exchange, and the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. So a stock exchange is kind of, kind of like a supermarket of companies where companies are on sale every day at different prices. So every day you can go into the stock market and buy shares of any company that you want, whether it's Facebook, McDonald's, Alibaba, Coca-Cola, or Visa. And now with online trading, it's so easy to buy and sell shares of companies. You can do it within seconds. All you need is a stockbroker. So you've got to use online low-cost stockbrokers that will allow you to access the stock market. So again, as long as you have got a computer, you can be anywhere in the world. You go on the internet, you connect with a broker, and you can buy and sell shares of any companies in the US exchanges. So to get some quick information about the share you're trading, you can go to a website like Finvis where most of the data is found on one page. So I'm looking at Facebook, and on Finvis, the first thing that you can see would be the charts, right? The stock chart. So this tells you the recent uh, price performance of the share. And you can see that it's currently selling at $177 per share. It was at $150 about a year ago. So it has appreciated uh, quite a bit since then. And you can see the stock is on a very clear uptrend. So we are bullish on the stock. There is a clear strong support at $170. So we'll talk more about uh, chart patterns um, in a short while. So down below you have got some of the key information about the stock you're trading. And so common question people ask would be, so Adam, what's important that I need to look out for? Well, it depends. If you are a short-term trader, then you're only concerned with the short-term price movement. And for that, you are only concerned really about the price action pattern of the chart, uh, the trend, if you will. And as far as fundamentals are concerned, um, you can just look at, for example, earnings growth for the next five years, earnings growth this year, as well as sales growth in the last few quarters. All right, Because obviously when a company has got strong earnings growth and sales growth, that gives the stock a momentum to move up uh, faster. All right, So again, it's a short-term trader, you're only concerned with growth, earnings growth and sales growth. Uh, if you're more of a medium to long-term investor like Warren Buffett, then you have to look more at 
uh, things like the price earnings ratio, right? That tells you uh, what's the share price divided by the earnings per share. So if you take the PE ratio divided by the earnings growth rate, which is 27%, if you take 32 divided by 27, you get 1.21. And this is known as the PEC ratio. So PEC ratio tells you is the share overvalued or is it undervalued? Is it expensive or is it cheap? And this is only important if you are a long-term investor. As a short-term trader, it doesn't matter if you buy a stock when it's expensive. Because in a short-term, expensive can become even more expensive. High can become higher. In fact, as a short-term trader, you do not want to buy cheap stocks. Because cheap can get cheaper because of the downward momentum. But as a long-term investor, you want to buy uh, as undervalued as you can. So it's really different whether you are a short-term trader or you're a long-term investor. I am creating... Uh, stock investment course in a couple of months, which is more focused on medium to long term investing. But for the purpose of this video, it's really about short term swing trading. Okay, again, as a long term investor, you'd also be concerned with things like current ratio and debt to equity ratio over here that tells you the company's leverage or debt position. You also look at things like gross margins, return on equity, um, and even insider transactions okay but not really important for a short-term trader now as a short-term trader it is also important to look at uh, the average volume uh, traded per day so how many shares are traded in a single day for Facebook you can see it's 21 million shares traded so you want sufficient liquidity so you can get in and out of the stock uh, with the minimum uh, slippage uh, in the bid to ask uh, spread okay as you can see over here, you have got the number of shares outstanding. We talked about that a while ago. So Facebook has 2.95 billion shares. So if you multiply the number of shares again with the share price, you get the market capitalization, which is $522 billion. All right. So there's some basic information that you can get from most websites. And Finvis is a pretty useful site where you can get most of this data on a single page. The most important question is how do you make money from trading stocks? How do you calculate your profits? And basically, there are only two ways to profit from the stock market. The first way is by going long, and the second way is by going short. So let's start with going long. What does going long mean? Going long simply means buying at a lower price and selling at a higher price. That's what it means. All right. So you buy low, sell high, or buy high and sell higher. So obviously, you can only do this if the share price goes up, okay? So you have to look for a stock whose share price is likely to go up. We are bullish on the price of the stock. So bullish means you are optimistic prices will move up, and that's when you go along, buy low and sell high, right? So for example, this is uh, FBC. This stock is called FBC. And when the stock was selling at $29, if you were bullish and you thought it's going to go up, what would you do? You would buy, right? You would buy at $29. So when you buy, what happens is a debit, okay? So money goes out, you're investing. So it's a negative $29 per share. And we also call this buy to open because you're buying to open a new position. So once you buy at 29 and if the price goes up as you anticipated, you would then sell at a higher price. So the price in this case goes to $36 over here. And you decide, okay, I'm getting out. You sell at 36. So when you sell, it's a credit, right? So minus 29 plus 36, the difference is $7 per share. So uh, when you sell, you are actually closing your position, okay? And you just made $7 per share. So from $29 to $36 is a 24% price increase. So that leads to a 24% increase in your investment returns. Now, the second way that we can make money in trading stocks is by going short, by doing the complete reverse, by selling high and buying low. So remember that not all stocks go up in price. In fact, there are more stocks that go down in price than they are going up in price. And to be a successful trader, 
you have to know how to make money regardless of the price direction. So as a successful trader, you have to know how to profit when the share price is going down. And we do that by going short, which again means selling at a high price and buying it back at a lower price. So let's take a look at General Electric. So this is a stock that has been on a downtrend for quite a while. And so it was selling at $26, as you can see over here. 26 bucks. So at $26, it was very obvious that it was on a downtrend. So we anticipate that it's going to go much, much lower. So what we do at $26, we click sell. So when we sell the share at $26, we get a credit of $26. Now, some of you are thinking, wait, 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 hold on a while. Adam, how do I sell something which I don't have? Yes, you can. We call that short selling. Let me write it down for you. It's called short selling. Short selling means you sell shares that you do not own. And how do you do that? By borrowing the shares from the stockbroker. And this happens within a few seconds. It's an automatic process, right? Now, provided the broker does have the shares to lend to you. So in the course, I'll teach you how you check if the broker can lend the shares to you, right? Now, but for most uh, major companies, the brokers will lend you the shares, yeah? So again, at $26, you click sell and the stockbroker will lend you the shares. So you borrow the shares and you sell it at $26, you get a credit of $26 in your account. Now, of course, this is not your money yet. You can't take this money and celebrate, right? Because you borrowed the shares to sell. You have to return the shares to the broker. So how do you return the shares when you've sold it? Well, by buying it back. Okay, so you want to buy it back at a lower price. So what happens is after a few days, a few weeks, the price in this case goes down to $20. From $26, the price drops to $20. You're a happy camper. So what do you do? You now buy it back from the stock market at $20. So when you buy it back, it's a debit, right? Minus $20. Now you already have a credit of $26. So when you debit $20, that leaves you with a net profit of $6 per share. So you've just made a profit of $6 per share as the price went from $26 to $20. So in this case, when you sold it initially, you are selling to open a position. And then you subsequently buy to close the position and you make a profit in the process. Now, some questions uh, people ask would be number one, um, uh, do I need a special account to do this? Yes, to do this, you need to open a, a margin account of the broker, okay? You have to open what we call a margin account in order to do uh, short selling. And in order to short sell a certain amount of shares, you must have some collateral or deposit in your account. And I'll talk more about this in the uh, next part of the trading course. Next question would be, uh, is there a deadline in which I have to return the shares? And the answer is no, there's no deadline, right? So you could borrow and sell the shares it could buy it back in a week, in two weeks, in two months, in two years. All right. Now, what's the catch? The catch is when you borrow the shares, you have to pay interest to the stockbroker. So obviously, the longer you borrow the shares, the longer you take to return it, the more interest you pay. Now, if you use a low-cost broker, you should not be paying any more than 2 to 3% interest on borrowing the shares. Now, most of the time as a trader, you will do a short sell. You buy it back within one or two weeks. So the interest you pay is actually pretty negligible, right? So that's how we make money as the price comes down. All right, so if you go long on a stock that increases in price by 24%, does that mean that your return on capital is also 24%? Well, it depends on whether you're buying with cash or you're buying with margin. And buying with margin means you're buying with borrowed money. You're using other people's money to make you money. And that leverages your return on capital. So let's take a look at how that works. For example, let's go back to the FBC uh, trade. So if you're buying at $29 and you're buying 100 shares, what's your total investment cost? Well, it's $29 multiplied by 100 shares. So the total investment is $2,900. And eventually you sell it at $36, right? So 36 bucks multiplied by 100 shares that have been bought is $3,600. So 
So 3006 minus 2009, the profit is $700. Now to make that $700, you used up 2,900 of your money. So the return on investment or ROI is 24%. So you can see that when you invest with your own cash, with your own money, then your return on investment is the same as the actual price increase percentage. Right? Now you may have heard of certain traders that are able to make 20%, 100% return a year when the stock market only went up 5%. So some people wonder, how is that possible? How is it possible that a stock market goes up by 5% and a great trader can make 50% return? Well, the way to do it is by learning how to leverage your investment capital. And we do that by uh, investing with margin or with contract for differences. So let me explain what that's all about. So we can use leverage to magnify our return on investment in two ways. And the first way is by using a margin account. So when you open an account with a broker, again, you can open a cash account or a margin account. So what does a margin account mean? A margin account means that for every $1 you put into the account, you can buy $2 worth of shares. Or in some cases, for some brokers, you put in a dollar and you can even buy up to $5 worth of shares. So that magnifies your buying power by five times. Okay? Another way to look at it is with a margin account of 50%, it means that, for example, if you're buying um, $1,000 worth of shares, you do not actually need to use $1,000. You just need to put a deposit of 50% of the amount. And that deposit is called margin. So if the margin that the broker gives you is 50%, that means to buy $1,000 worth of shares, you need to put down $500 in capital. Okay. Now, if you're not a US citizen, you're able to trade using CFDs. CFDs stand for Contract for Difference. And this allows you to buy shares or to short sell only require, require, requiring 10% margin or 10% deposit. So with CFDs, if you want to buy a $1,000 worth of shares, then you just need to put down a deposit or a margin of $100. So one of the reasons why I'm able to get a very high return on my capital every single year is because I trade with CFDs. So that allows me to leverage my capital. So let's take a look at how it works um, using an example of FBC again. Right? So again, imagine you are buying 100 shares of FBC, but this time you're using a margin account. So your investment is supposed to be $29 multiplied by 100 shares, which is 2009 But with a 50% margin account, we only need an investment capital of 1450 or 50% of the actual amount. Okay? Now, when we sell it at $36, we still make a profit of $7 multiplied by 100 shares. So our, our profit is still $700. But this time, we're making $700 out of 1450. So our return on investment is now 48%. So a 24% price increase leads to a 48% return on capital. So we have effectively uh, leveraged our return by two times. We call this two times leverage. Okay. Now, if you, again, are not a US citizen and you're able to use CFDs, uh, this means that when you uh, trade FBC, you're buying 29 shares. Sorry, you're buying... Uh, 100 shares of $29, so your investment is 2009 but you only require 10% of deposit or margin. So the actual capital use is $290 to buy 100 shares. So again, you sell it at $36, you're making $7 per share, multiplied by 100 shares is $700 profit. So you're now making $700 out of an investment of $290. So your return on investment is now 241%, which is 10 times 
the actual increase in price. So you can see that by using a margin account or using CFDs, we're able to leverage our returns by two times to 10 times. Now, of course, leverage is a double-edged sword, which means if the price went down instead of going up, we will lose double the uh, returns. Okay, So in, instead of losing 24%, if you went down by 24%, we're losing 48%. If you went down by 10%, we are losing 100% of our capital. And that is why you only use leverage as a short-term trader with very strict risk management rules, where you have to place a stop loss. If you're more of an investor, where you don't have a stop loss and you're buying and holding for the long run, you should never ever use margin. You should never ever use board money because you could blow your account and end up bankrupt. Okay, so again, leverage is very powerful, but it has to be used responsibly with very strict risk management criteria, which means if the trade doesn't go the way which you anticipate, you have to quickly cut your losses. You have to cut your losses so when you're losing trades, you lose very little. But when you have a winning trade, you leverage two times to ten times of your returns. And that's the, the key to achieving high returns uh, in your trading uh, portfolio. Now, if you're doing short-term trading, then leverage is essential to growing your account fast. Why? Because when you do short-term trading, you're in and out of the market within a few days, or in the case of intraday trading, within a few hours. So in a few hours and a few days, the price can't move that much. So in order to have a good return on your capital, you have to leverage the price increase. So going back to the example of FBC, and if you were to enter the trade at, for example, $35 right here, and you're doing a quick swing trade, which is a couple of days, right? So you're in there at $35. Bucks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six days, you exit with $38. So in six days, the price went up by $2.50, which represents a 7% increase in the share price. So again, by using leverage, margin account of CFDs, you are magnifying your capital by 14% to even up to 70%. That's a 2 to 10 times uh, leverage. So again, let me just say that leverage must only be used with strict risk management rules, which means placing a stop loss right below your entry. So that if it's a losing trade, you have to cut your losses and get out really fast. And the winning trades, when they appear, will more than make up for the small losses. One of the reasons why many people go bankrupt is because they use leverage when they buy and hold the investment with no stop loss. And that's how you can destroy your account. So only use leverage in short-term trading and not long-term investing. It's really very important. Okay? So one of the things to understand uh, as a successful trader or investor is that there's no such thing as a good or bad market. And there's no such thing as a good or bad stock. You know, many people ask me, Adam, this year, would, would it be a good stock market? And I, and I ask them, I say, what do you mean by a good stock market, right? If the price of the market goes up this year, is it good? It's good if you go long. If you don't go long, it's no good, right? If the stock market crashes this year, is that good? Well, it's good if you go short. If you did not go short, it's not good. So whether something is good or not has nothing to do with the external event. It has nothing to do with the market. It's got to do with your investment strategy. It's got to do with whether you go long, you go short, or you did nothing. And again, there's no such thing as a good or bad stock. Because a stock that goes up can be good if you go long on the stock. But a stock that goes down can also be equally as profitable if you go short on the stock. So once you understand this mindset, you take responsibility for your trading results every single year. You do not blame the market, you don't blame luck, you don't blame the Federal Reserve chairperson or the chairman, all right? Whether you make money or not depends entirely on your skills as a trader because you profit as long as you follow the direction of the stock price. So this makes it a recession-proof skill to make money. So here's the million-dollar question, which is how do you know where the stock price is going for a particular stock or for the whole market. How do you know whether to go long or to go short? So there are two ways to determine the stock price. Okay, The first way 
is using fundamental analysis. So fundamental analysis means you are studying the business behind the stock. Is it a good business? Is the business growing in terms of its sales, its profits, or are sales and profits declining? So logically, a business is a money-making machine. So if the business makes more money, it's more valuable. So the value of the company goes up, the share price should go up logically. Does it make sense? So at the same time, if the company is losing money, profits are falling, sales are falling, the company is worth less and less, and the share price will eventually go down in value. So in other words, fundamental analysis is really studying the company's sales and earnings growth, as well as the company's amount of debt versus its net assets, as well as knowing the value of the company. So is the current price above valuation? Is it overvalued? Or is it below valuation? Is it undervalued? So that tells you likely where the price is going to go, right? So in general, when a company has high growth, right? When, it, when it's showing high sales and earnings growth, cash flow growth, and when it's got a high valuation, that would lead to the share price going up. And that's when you want to go along, logically, right? At the same time, if the company's growth is slowing down, or it's got negative growth, or the company's actual value is really low compared to the share price, we expect the share price to go down in value. So how important is fundamental analysis in determining price direction? Well, it is really important for the medium to the long term. So if you're more of a medium to long term investor, you have to focus a lot on fundamental analysis. But I've got to tell you that for short term traders, which means anything less than a year, fundamental analysis is not that important because in the short term, stock prices are not driven by logic. In the short term, stock prices are driven by emotions, market sentiment. And that's why sometimes you may see a company with sales growing, profits growing, but in the short term, the price goes down. Why? Because simply the whole market sentiment is bearish, it's negative. At the same time, you can have a company that's losing money. Companies' sales and profits are falling, but the price keeps going up. Why? Because the whole market is bullish, right? So again, in the short term, it is all about emotions. In the long term, it's all about fundamentals. So again, if you're more of a medium to long-term investor, you can pick good companies to go long on in the long run by uh, screening for good fundamentals. And let me show you how that can be done with Finvis. So let's take a look at how important fundamentals are to long-term price performance. So again, I'm at Finvis, and I'm looking at the stock screener. Uh, there are a total of 7,000 stocks in the US, and I'm going to select only the stocks with really great fundamentals in the long run, right? So for example, earnings per share growth uh, above 10%. So this will uh, filter for companies whose uh, earnings growth is over 10% a year for the last five years, right? Uh, sales growth in the last five years, over 10%. Um, Earnings growth for the last five years, over here 10%, over 10%. Alright, so again, sorry. This is earnings growth in the last five years, over 10%. Sales growth over the last five years, 10%. And this is a projected earnings growth in the next five years, over 10%. Um, a company with good fundamentals has got return on equity above 15% has got low uh, debt to equity ratio, which means it's got low uh, debt uh, compared to its uh, equity. So you can put this over, uh, sorry, under one. Uh, current ratio uh, tells you the company's current assets over its current liabilities. You put it above one, there we go. Um, so once you put in all these criteria, it has filtered 84 companies out of 7,000. So these are the 84 companies with the strongest growth in its sales and its profits and its lowest debt. All right. So you can see that if you take a look at any of these companies, it will show you really great long-term stock price performance. All right. So the first one is ABMD. All right. ABMD. 
and if you look at a chart and if you can select for the last five years you can put it in a b m d there you go you can see in the long run over five years the company will increase in value and the share price would go up in the long run okay um, the next stock is uh, Adobe ADBE. So again, if you punch that in, you can see in the last five years, uh, it's again a very strong performing stock. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the next one, which is uh, ALGN Align Technologies. And again, if you punch it in ALGN, once again in the long run, um, you can see that it is going up. Okay, so again, this is important for medium to long term investing, and I'll be coming up soon with an investing course uh, which is focused on fundamental analysis and stock valuation. All right, where I'll focus a lot more on the fundamentals, and so that's how you can find uh, good companies to hold for the long run. So you can see that in the long run, uh, fundamentally good companies will always increase in value so the price would always increase in the long run but in the short run if you zoom into the short run you can see that the price will go through ups and downs as well okay so sometimes a good company can have a fall in the stock price in the short term and this again is due to the short term market sentiment or the bullish or bearishness so as a swing trader we are more concerned about the short-term price movements. And that is why it's a short-term trader where you're trading more for short-term income. Uh, we have to focus more on technical analysis. So technical analysis is really studying the emotions that drive the stock price in the short term. Because in, again, in the short term, prices are driven not by logic, not by fundamentals, but purely by emotions of fear and greed, of demand and supply. So as a short-term trader, we have to focus on reading price trends, wave structures, uh, candlestick patterns, support and resistance levels that tell us supply and demand zones, moving averages, certain indicators that tell us overbought, oversold, strength of trend conditions. And by doing this, we can anticipate short-term price movements. So let's take a quick look at um, how do we analyze short-term price movements. So as mentioned, in the long run, a good business would always see its share price increase. But in the short run, prices go through market cycles or phases. So any stock, any market will go through three main parts of the cycle. So there's a certain uh, time when the price is on an uptrend cycle, like so, okay, where prices tend to move higher in the short run. And then it goes into a consolidation phase where prices tend to move in a sideways fashion. And then there are times it goes into a downtrend where it makes a downtrending move. It goes in a consolidation pattern again over here. And then another uptrend pattern over there. So again, it doesn't always go uh, through this uh, sequence of cycles. It could, could be on an uptrend and then a downtrend or a downtrend and uptrend and consolidation. So it's critical when you're trading to know which cycle is the stock or the market in? So let's study the three different cycles. So the first one is an uptrend. So stocks are normally on an uptrend uh, when the market is bullish. So how do you define an uptrend? An uptrend is defined when the price makes a series of higher highs and higher lows. So on an uptrend, price still comes down for a few days. But every time the price goes down, it makes a higher high, right? Comes down, makes a new high. 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 So again, an uptrend is when the stock makes a series of higher highs, as you can see, and a series of higher lows. And when the price is on an uptrend, the probability is that prices will move higher because the market is bullish or optimistic. So on an uptrend, you always want to go long. Okay, You always want to go long on the uptrend. 
because you always want to buy when prices are more probable to go up than to go down. So question is, when is the best time to buy on an uptrend? Would you want to buy at A here or at B here? Once again, would you want to buy at A at this point or at B at this point? Well, the answer should be obvious, B, right? Because you always want to buy as low as possible, right? Buy low, sell high. So you always want to buy at the lowest point of an uptrend, and we call this a dip, right? So prices move in wave patterns. It moves in an impulsive wave. We call this the impulsive wave. And then the corrective wave, or we call it a dip as well. So this is a dip, impulse, dip, impulse, dip. So you always want to buy at the dip. Now the question would be, how do you know where is the lowest point of the dip? How would you know it will not go lower, right? Now you can't know for 100% certainty, but you can make a pretty good guess because whenever the price makes a dip, it tends to find support at one of the moving averages. So in this case, you can see we have, I'm putting in uh, three really major moving averages, the 50 moving average, which is the blue line, the 150 moving average, the green line, and the 200 moving average, which is the red line. Okay. Now, different stocks tend to respect different moving averages, and moving averages act as levels of defense. So in the stock trading and stock investing course, uh, in the lessons to come, I'll talk more about which moving averages to use for different stocks and for different time frames. So you can see in this case, um, on the uptrend, when price moves up and it gets a bit too far from the moving average, it will retrace to the moving average. Goes up, retraces, goes up, retraces, goes up, retraces, goes up, retraces. So whenever the price gets very near the moving average or it bounces off the moving average, that is the optimal time to buy. So we always buy the dip on the uptrend. Okay, so this would be a buy point over here. This would be a buy point. And this would be a buy point when it bounces off the moving average. And this is also known as buying on the retracement. Okay, buying on the retracement. What you never want to do on an uptrend is you never want to buy at the high. Okay, never buy the highs of the uptrend. Why? Because when the price goes at a high, eventually it would have to retrace back to the moving average. Okay. Now, will there be times when there are traders who sell on an uptrend, where they go against the trend? Yes, there are. And you only do that when the price is overbought on the uptrend, which means the price has gone up Okay, and it's kind of like gone too far from the moving average, it will eventually snap back to the moving average. So um, again, in the stock trading course, in the lessons to come, I'll show you when is the point when the price is overstretched. It's kind of like a rubber band. When you stretch it too much up, it would snap back before continuing higher. So uh, if tr you can, uh, so traders who sell short over there they are taking what is known as a counter trend trade because you are shorting against the uptrend. But if you short over there, you have to quickly buy back over here to take your profits before the trend continues. Okay. So uptrends don't last forever. Eventually, uptrends would reverse into downtrends. So what's a downtrend? Downtrend is when the price makes a series of lower highs, as you can see, and a series of lower lows. So on a downtrend, prices go up as well for a few days or a few weeks. But every time the price goes up, what happens? It goes lower. It goes up, it goes lower. It goes up, it goes lower. It goes up, it goes lower. Okay. So on a downtrend, you never ever want to buy. You never ever want to hold a stock. So on a downtrend, the probability is prices will continue going lower. Price always follows trend. So on a downtrend, what you want to do? You always want to sell or you want to short during a downtrend. Okay, you want to sell, sell short. So you make money as it goes down. 
So when is the best time to sell on a downtrend? Would you want to sell at A, at the high of the downtrend, or sell at B, at the low of the downtrend? Once again, would you want to sell at A, or sell at B? Right? Obviously, logically, you always want to sell at the high of a downtrend. Right? Sell high, buy low. So always sell the high of a downtrend, never sell the low. Okay? So the, again, the question is, um, how would you know it's the high of the uptrend? How would you know it's not going to go higher? Right? So again, when we're shorting on a downtrend, we're looking for resistance levels. And again, the best kind of resistance to use would be moving averages. And again, I've placed some of the major moving averages, the 50, uh, the 100 in this case, the 150 and the 200 moving average. So again, notice that price moves in wave patterns, right? It's on an impulse, it rallies, impulse, rallies, impulse, rallies, okay? So let me write that down. This is again known as an impulsive wave. So the impulsive wave is the wave in the direction of the trend. So the trend is down, impulsive wave is going down. And then we have what is, what is known as the corrective wave, which is the wave opposite the trend direction. And in the downtrend, the corrective wave is also known as a rally. So you always want to sell the rallies of the downtrend. Okay, so again, the best time to sell is when the rally hits a moving average and finds resistance and continues going down. So you can see over here, it rallies, hits the moving average, goes down. Rallies, hits the moving average, goes down. Rallies, hits the moving average, that is the ideal time to short, to sell before the next collapse. So always sell the high. Never ever sell the low of the downtrend. Okay. Now again, are there times when traders or even investors buy during a downtrend? Yes, there are times you do that. When the price is oversold on a downtrend and you expect it to snap back up. So remember, is again, back to the rubber band example. When you stretch the rubber band too low, it's oversold, it will snap back. So notice over here, if it gets too low, you snap back. Too low, snap back. Too low. So when it's oversold, that's when traders would buy at oversold conditions. So you buy there, quickly, goes up, take your profit before the trend continues. Okay. So again, I'll teach you exactly when you buy right at the bottom of a downtrend to catch the temporary bounce before it continues going down in the next couple of lessons in this stock trading course. So let me summarize how you trade the trends using my favorite metaphor, the metaphor of breathing patterns, right? So again, on an uptrend, uh, think of it as the market needs to breathe out and breathe in before it breathes out again, all right? So the market breathes out, you can't breathe out forever, right? Eventually, you have to breathe in, all right? And after you breathe in, then breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, and the pattern continues. Okay. And again, we use moving averages. In this case, this blue line is one of the moving averages. It could be the 50 moving average. So again, the moving average you use depends on the particular stock and particular time frame. And I'll go that in more into depth during uh, the next part of this uh, course. So the moving averages helps us to tell when the price has breathed out too much and it's due to breathe in before breathing out again. And again, we want to enter at the breathing in stage. And we can then exit to take profits at the breathing out stage as a swing trader. Okay, so again, on an uptrend, we call this the impulsive wave. And this is known as the corrective wave. Okay, so we always want to buy over there. We want to buy at the dip or at the end of the correction. Buy the dip, that's the lowest uh, risk point of buy, and you could sell when the price has moved too far from the moving average, it's gonna snap, sell, snaps back, and you just repeat this process. So on a downtrend, it's the opposite. On a downtrend, we have got an impulsive wave, breathe out, 
Breathe in. <gasps> breathe out. <sighs> breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. And so on and so forth. So again, on a downtrend, we have the impulsive wave. Oops, I took the wrong pen. Okay, that's the impulsive wave and the corrective wave and so on and so forth, right? So again, we use one of the moving averages, which again could be the 200 moving average, depending on the stock, okay? So the best time to sell is when you have a breathing in, right? You sell over there. You sell short. You sell short over there. So when you have the breathing in, <gasps> sell, boom, goes down. And again, you could take profit by buying over there. Right? You buy when the price is oversold and it snaps back to the moving average. So in a nutshell, that's how you trade trends. You buy at retracements and you sell at retracements on uptrends and downtrends uh, respectively. Okay, so the next thing that can happen is that the price goes into a consolidation period. So in a consolidation, the price is moving sideways. And oftentimes, the price wants to go up, but it's meeting a, a resistance level, right? So the price uh, wants to go up, but it hits a certain level. In this case, it's $49, and boom, it comes back down again. Price goes up again, hits 49, comes back down again. Price goes up, hits 49, comes back down again. So it tells you that at $49, there are many sellers waiting to sell. Supply exceeds demand, so the price can't break this level. At the same time, when the price goes down to a certain level, in this case it's 37, what happens? It reverses up. Goes back to 37, reverses up. Goes back to 37, reverses up. So it tells you that at $37, there are a lot of buyers waiting to buy. Demand exceeds supply. That's what known as a support level. And the price kind of ding-dongs between support and resistance. Okay? And whenever you see the market or a stock in a consolidation, the best time to buy would be at support. Right? So you buy at support, buy over there, and you take profit the moment it reaches a resistance. Okay, again, comes back down, buy at support, sell at resistance. So you just wash, rinse, and repeat. And you can make a lot of money just playing stocks in ranges. Okay, so in the next part of the course, I'll teach you how do you find stocks every day which are in a range. There are always stocks in a range. There are always markets in a range. And this is known as trading the range. Okay, so buy at support, sell at resistance. Now, one of the things that you never want to do when the price is in a consolidation, is you never buy near the resistance. Okay, so don't ever buy over here. Okay, some people think, hey, that's an uptrend, and they buy over there, it goes up, boom, and they lose money. Right? They say, hey, it's going up, it's an uptrend. They buy over there, boom, they lose money because they're buying right at the resistance level. Okay? Now, eventually a consolidation will end. So, how does it end? There are two ways it will end. Number one, uh, a consolidation could eventually be broken into a new uptrend. So what happens is you have a strong resistance, 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 and eventually there's enough demand that will break the, the, the supply level at that level. And once it breaks, it starts a new uptrend. Okay, So that is also a great time to start going long on a stock. When it breaks a consolidation and starts a new uptrend and traders who buy oops traders who buy at these prices are known as breakout traders they are buying the breakout so you could buy the breakout when it breaks above or there are some traders who don't buy the breakout they wait for a breakout and they wait for the price to come back to the resistance, and resistance will eventually become support. If the price comes down and bounces off the support, they will enter at the support level on the bounce. So this is known as a retracement trader. So you can, again, buy on the initial breakout or buy on the retracement to the previous resistance, turn support, and enter here before it continues going up. So 
These are two styles that traders use. Similarly, a downtrend, or rather a consolidation, can also end by breaking down into a downtrend. So in this case, you can see support, 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 eventually, boom, it breaks support and starts a new downtrend. And that is a great time where traders would short, would sell short. So uh, traders who sell over there, they sell short and profit as it collapses, they are known as breakout traders as well. So they are buying the breakout to the downside or buying the breakout to the upside. Okay. Now, some traders don't buy on the, on the first breakout. They wait for the breakout and they wait for a retracement to the previous support that would become resistance, right? So they wait for it to go up there, hit the resistance, come down, and they will sell it only at the retracement. So again, you could sell at breakout or sell at retracement. So there are many styles in which you can enter and exit the market uh, being a swing trader. Now, a common question that I'm asked is, Adam, when you are looking at the markets, what time frames do you use? Do you look at daily candles or you know, five-minute candles, and what kind of duration you look at uh, on the charts? Well, it all depends. There are so many ways to make money from the markets, and it depends, again, are you an investor, a swing trader, a day trader, or scalper? So I'm going to give you a rundown on basically the four styles of uh, approaching the markets. And the first style is known as position trading, also known as investing. So if you look at someone like a Warren Buffett, He's known as an investor because he holds for many years. All right? He holds a position for many years. And it's also known as position trading. So for position traders or investors, they tend to look at weekly uh, and daily candles in analyzing the charts. And some long-term investors like Warren Buffett, they don't even look at charts at all. All they look at is really the fundamentals of the business. So in uh, investing, we tend to focus on fundamentals, sales, profits, debt, so on and so forth. And again, holding period would be months to very often years. And as a position trader, you tend to look at the market less frequently. You tend to review your invest investment probably just once every quarter when the company announces its earnings uh, report. Or you could take a look at the charts once a week. And in investing, as I've mentioned, you never use leverage. You never invest with borrowed money. You always invest with your cash uh, because you are going to buy and hold through the ups and downs. Okay, And it's a very low intensity because you don't have to watch the market that frequently. So this is great for people who don't have much time. Okay, um, The next approach is known as swing trading. And primarily, when I trade stocks, I tend to focus on this approach known as swing trading. So in swing trading, I use uh, day candles and end of day uh, market data. I don't look at a market when it's open because that's when I'm asleep. Uh, the US time, it's when I'm asleep in Asia. Okay. So in swing trading, typically my trade lasts for about a week to maximum two weeks. So I'll put it less than two weeks. Uh, more often than not, the trade lasts for a few days. So I'm in and out for a few days. And I just look at the market for 30 minutes to an hour a day uh, before it opens. I do my research before the market opens. I place my orders. When the market opens, I'm not there. The broker will execute the buy and sell orders automatically. So it frees up a lot of my time. Uh, in swing trading, I've mentioned, you have to trade with leverage. And it's still relatively low intensity because you only look at the market for 30 minutes to an hour a day. That's it. Now, what's a bit more high intensity would be day trading. So day trading involves watching the market throughout the trading day, through the ups and downs. And usually for day traders, we use one to five minute candles. Okay, um, And the entries and exits are obviously within a trading day, within 24 hours. So usually you buy and sell within a few minutes or a few hours. And you have to constantly monitor the market when it is open. Okay. Now, if you are day trading stocks, there is a law that says you need to have a minimum of $25,000 in your account to be a day trader. If you're not a US citizen, 
you can get around this rule by trading using CFDs. So with CFDs, you can circumvent the $25,000 rule. Now in day trading, you need to use again high leverage as well as it's pretty high intensity because you're watching the market uh, move by move. Okay. Now personally, as a, uh, as a person who lives in Asia, it's challenging for me to day trade during uh, the US market hours. So when I day trade, it's only in the first hour of the market open. Okay, I tend to day trade a lot more in Asia using currency trading or forex trading, which is 24 hours. Uh, finally, you have what is known as scalping. So scalping um, is basically entering and exiting a trade within a few seconds or one to two minutes. So often we use one minute candles and Again, we have to monitor the market before it opens, so we scalp stocks that are announcing earnings, and we scalp the earnings news. And again, you need a $25,000 minimum to, to be a scalper, or use CFDs, so you do not need to have that minimum amount. Very high leverage and very high intensity, I do scalp the stock market through a technique known as the gap up news scalp, or the gun strategy, where I scalp... Um, uh, stocks that are announcing earnings and I scalp the earnings news. So let's take a look at the charts and let's look at how we'll approach the market under the, these different styles. So let's take a look at one of the stocks we identified earlier, which is Adobe. So we know that Adobe is a fundamentally really good company. So if you're more of a position trader or investor, uh, you would just buy and hold the stock for the long term. All right? And for investors, they don't really care about the short-term price movements, as long as the stock price is below the intrinsic value, it is undervalued, then they will just buy and they will just hold it for the long run. So you can see that for an investor, you look at a 5 to a 10-year to time frame, you look at daily candles, and again, in the long run, it would be going up and you'll not be concerned about the short-term uh, corrections as a long-term investor. Uh, as a long-term investor, um, you may also look at the weekly candles. So uh, at, from the weekly perspective, you can also see a very clear uptrend. Again, um, these temporary corrections will not concern you. In fact, these could be good buying opportunities uh, when the price becomes temporarily undervalued. And again, in my stock investing course, I'll talk more about how do you value a company and how do you tell when the price is undervalued or overvalued. So uh, investors typically, their main goal is wealth accumulation, to grow their savings in the long run. Now, if you're someone who wants to trade for a living, to earn, uh, to generate income from the markets, then you have to be more of a swing trader or day trader or even a scalper. And again, as a swing trader, you're focused on the short-term price movements. So we go to maybe uh, a shorter time frame, like a six-month time frame, we look at daily candles, and we could put in some of the uh, moving averages, like so. There we go, right? So for a swing trader, when would you enter? Again, you wait for a corrective uh, retracement, right? So you see the impulsive wave is over there, and then you see a corrective wave, and again, it's finding support at the 50 moving average. And we also use candlestick patterns. So in this case, you can see this is a bullish pin bar candlestick pattern, which is a bullish candlestick pattern. So as a swing trader, you would probably put a buy order somewhere here. You would buy the stock somewhere over there. You place a stop loss right below. Okay, so this is the risk uh, which you're taking on this trade. And you probably have a profit target somewhere there. This is your a profit target or take profit. So you buy, the price goes up uh, for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe for 10 days, it hits the profit target and you exit with a uh, profit of 2R. So again, what does R represent? It represents uh, your risk per trade. So if you are risking, for example, 2% of your capital on the trade, you would exit with a 4% a return on capital for this particular trade. So this is what how you would uh, trade as a swing trader. And I'll talk more about this in the slides to follow. 
If you're more of an intraday or day trader, you would then zoom into, for example, uh, a one day time frame and look at maybe the five minute candles. Okay, so you can see that this is one day. So from here to here, this is 24 hours. And each candle represents five minutes. So you can see that on this particular day, it was on a clear trend as well, impulse uh, correction, impulse minor correction and continuous, right? So as an intraday trader, you could see that the price was bouncing off uh, this line. And this line happens to be the 40 exponential moving average. So uh, it could have been a here, bounce, it could have bought, uh, put a buy order over there, right? Could put a stop loss just below the uh, moving average. And when it reaches somewhere there, you could actually take your profit. So again, you're risking uh, one R uh, to make two R, for example. So in this case, you can see that uh, on an intraday time frame, uh, you would buy at, say, $205. Stop loss is at $204. Let me just take it up. $205.40 and 204.60, right? So you're buying at 205.40 uh, cents and stop loss at 204, sorry, this is about 60 cents, uh, 204.40 cents, right? So essentially your stop loss is about uh, $2 away, okay? And the moment, moment the price goes up by, say, $4 or $5, you could take profit uh, for a quick uh, trade. All right, so this is how you trade it uh, as an intraday trader. So again, um, for swing trading and intraday trading, you're trading for income, a monthly income, quarterly income. But for a long-term investor like Warren Buffett, you're actually holding for long-term wealth accumulation. So there are many ways to trade. And... Now, let me take a, uh, show you a closer look at how you would set up your swing trades. All right, so you can see that for investing, uh, the approach is to really just hold the shares for the long run and to just ride the trend for as long as the trend goes. And that's because for investing, the goal is really about wealth accumulation, growing your capital over time. But for swing trading, uh, day trading and scalping, uh, the main objective is to create regular income for yourself. So because of that, you always enter with a set profit target. So once it hits the profit target, you exit the trade and go for the next trade. And you just keep repeating the process. So whenever you do a short-term trade, especially a swing trade, you're always three points in every trade or three orders that you need to place at once. So when you're going long, so going long means right, buying low and selling high. So when you're going long, for long trades, uh, winning traders always place three orders. First, you place the entry order, where you enter the, 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 the trade, uh, the place which you buy, basically. Uh, you must also place a stop loss order, which is the price that you will exit with a loss, because any trade could turn out to be a losing trade. You never know. So you always have to have a point of uh, cutting your loss. Okay. At the same time, you also place a take profit price, which is the price that you will exit with a profit. So let's take a look at it graphically. So you can see over here, for example, for a certain stock, we buy at ninety dollars, right? And again, it depends on the strategy, uh, on where we place our buy order. So you buy at ninety dollars, and you place your stop loss at eighty-seven dollars. Okay. So again, I'll show you in a short while. Uh, where you place your stop loss. So where you place your stop loss, again, depends on that specific strategy based on the price action of the charts. So in this case, your risk per share is $3. For every share you buy, you're risking $3. Okay? So the key to trading is always to risk $1 to make $2 or more. So for example, if your target is uh, double your risk, your profit target will be three times two, you'll be six dollars per share. Okay, so again, this is known as the one hour distance, 
and the profit target will be at 2R, and R represents your risk. So question is, how many shares do you buy? So you have to calculate the number of shares to buy so that when it hits your stop loss, a losing trade results in a fixed loss of capital, a fixed small percentage loss. So for example, it could be you're risking 2% of your capital. Okay? And if it hits your profit target, you should make double or more. So in this case, if you're risking 2%, you make 4% returns. If you're risking 3%, then you're making 6%, and so on and so forth. So how much risk you take depends on your individual uh, style. Okay? So I'm going to give you an example of how this works on an actual trade. So this is a trade where we are uh, basically buying as it retraces, finding support on the moving average. So you can see this is the impulsive wave, and then that's the corrective wave, of, wave or the dip, and you can see that it finds support at the 50 moving average, and at that point, it's going to bounce up, and we buy right at the bounce. So in this case, we buy at $90. That's the buy price, okay? So where do you put the stop loss? So for this particular strategy, we place the stop loss right below the moving average support. So right below the blue line, we place the stop loss somewhere a few cents below that line. So in this case, the stop loss would be at $87. Okay. So again, that gives us a risk per share of $3. Every share you buy, you're risking $3 if it hits the stop loss, if it turns out to be a losing trade. And our profit target will be two times our risk per share, so $6. Okay, so $90 plus six will give you a profit target of $96. Okay, so how many shares do you buy? So let's take a look at the mathematics. <clears throat> so assuming you have a capital of $5,000, okay, that's your total capital, okay? and you decide to risk 2% for every trade you take. Remember, this has to be a fixed risk per trade. So we decide on 2%. Could be 3%, could be 1%. Let's just take 2%, okay? So how many shares do we buy? Well, you take your total capital, which is $5,000, and you multiply it by 2%. That gives you $100, right? So in other words, for every trade you take, the maximum loss is $100, which is 2% of your total capital, okay? Now, so your total risk is $100, but each share you buy is $3 of risk. So how many shares do you buy? Well, you simply take $100, which is the total risk of the trade, divide by $3, which is the risk per share, you get 33 shares. So there you go, you buy 33 shares, okay? So what's your position size? So you're buying 33 shares at $90. Okay, sorry, this is a bit of typo. This should be $90, okay? 90 bucks. So $90 uh, times 33 is, uh, let me just do some math. I'm not very good at mental math, okay? So 90 times 33 is 2970. There you go. So out of $5,000, you're using $2,000 for this trade. Now, that's if you buy in cash. Again, if you use a margin account or use CFDs, you don't actually need $2,900. You just need half of that or 10% of that, which is normally what I do. Okay. So if it turns out to be a winning trade, what happens? So a winning trade would mean a $6 profit, right? $6 profit times 33 shares, that's $198. So $198 out of $5,000 represents 4% return on capital in just a few days, okay? Now, if it hits your stop loss, you lose $3 times 33 shares, that's $99, which represents a 2% loss of capital. So can you see how by calculating number of shares, we're able to control the percentage risk and percentage return on our total capital. So in the trading course, you'll be getting a calculator. And the calculator looks like this. Let me just bring it up for you there. There we go. This is the position sizing calculator. that will be part of the course. 
So with this calculator, you can key in your capital. So again, it could be 5,000 multiplied by, again, it could be a 1% risk, could be a 5% risk. So assuming you risk 2% per trade and you're buying at $90, right? Your stop loss is 80, 87, your profit target is 96, boom. Immediately, you can see number of shares to buy, 33. So this helps you to calculate the number of shares to buy for every trade immediately. So it makes it really convenient. And again, you get it as part of the uh, trading course. So what if you're going short? If you're going short, it's the opposite. Similarly, you place three orders at the same time. When you're doing a short trade, right, you want to sell high and take profit lower to make a profit, okay? So in this case, the stock's at $50. You anticipate it's going to go down, so you sell at $50. That is your entry price, okay? And subsequently, you place a stop loss above your entry price at $52. So if it goes up to $52, you exit with a loss of $2 per share. So if you're risking $2 per share, you want to make at least $4 per share. So your profit target should be double of that. So your profit target would be $50 minus $4, and that gives you a profit target of $46, right? So again, you're risking one hour to make two hour, and you calculate the number of shares to short so that you risk a small percentage of your capital, and you make double of that for a winning trade. So... For a particular stock, where's the best place to put the buy, the stop loss, and the take profit? So it all depends on the trading system that you're using. So I use a variety of trading systems that work best under different market conditions. For example, when the market is trending in a strong uptrend or strong downtrend, I use the moving average bounce system, where again, I buy when it bounces off, off the moving average on an uptrend, and I short when it bounces off the moving average on a downtrend. I also use what is known as the impulse pullback system. Whenever a stock starts a new uptrend, I wait for a minor pullback to enter to catch the rest of the trend. So that's known as the impulse pullback system. There's also the breakout system that works well when the price breaks out of a consolidation, either breaking up or breaking down. And for intraday, I use what is known as the gap up new scalp where uh, a stock announces good news, like great earnings, and the stock gaps up at the market open, I will scalp the price increase in a few seconds or a few minutes at times. So these are what, what is known as trend-following systems. So to be a successful trader, you need to have a specific system that tells you exactly what to buy, when to buy, when to sell, and how many shares to buy. What is your risk management? And sometimes when a stock's in a consolidation pattern, going sideways, going uh, uh, nowhere, then I use what is known as the Bollinger Mean Reversion System, where I sell on the uh, minor uptrend and I buy on the minor downtrend, where I'm looking for it to revert to the mean, the center. I also use the capitulation system for panic selling, buying right at the bottom, and a system called trading the range system. So it's kind of like in a business, Right. To run a successful business, for example, you're selling, you know, you're selling clothes, uh, you need to sell, for example, winter clothes for winter and swimwear for summer. So similarly, you need to have different trading systems when the market goes into different phases. So if you've got a trading system that only works when the market is going up, then when the market is going down, you can't make money. So to be a successful trader, you must make money consistently under every market condition. So let's take a quick look at some of my different systems. So again, this is known as my moving average bounce system, where it looks for stocks that are trending and bouncing off the moving average. And we buy as it bounces off uh, one of the key moving averages. And again, you're going to learn in the course that different stocks respond to different moving averages. So you have to know which moving averages to use for which stocks. So again, this is an example of a long moving average bounce trade where the price impulse, pullback, and again, we buy at 89, and we sell at 98, with a stop loss right below the moving average. Uh, and also, you will learn how to use certain indicators, like the stochastics and the MACD, to tell oversold 
and strong uh, trend conditions. This is an example of a short bounce trade, where again, it's a clear downtrend, like so, impulse, and it's pulling back to the moving average, it's bouncing off one of the moving averages, and once it goes down, we do a short sell, and we quickly take profit within a few days. So these are known as swing trades, where we take consistent profits out of the market. This is the impulse pullback system when a stock makes a new uptrend and we find uh, a new uptrend by looking at certain moving average uh, and indicator crossover. So whenever there's a crossover, it tells us that it's a new uptrend. We wait for a minor pullback from the uptrend, finding support at the moving average and we buy as it bounces off the moving average and reaches our target price in again about four to five days. Okay, and um, here's another system which is a mean reversion system, okay, where we buy at the downtrend when it's oversold, ready to bounce up. So you can see there's a downtrend, right, going on this downtrend pattern, and then over here it gets really oversold, like overstretch, right, rubber band, and we have got like a bullish pin bar. So we do a quick buy, a stop loss. It catapults up to our profit target and we exit within about four days. All right, so this is known as a mean reversion system, buying uh, against the, the downtrend. This is a short example where, again, the price is going up, goes down, makes a double top. It's known as a double top. It forms a bearish pin bar and we do a quick short sell. And it goes down, hits our profit target and we exit in three days. For quick profit. So again, this is selling when it's overbought with a double top, it comes down and we take a quick exit. And when prices are in a range, going sideways in a range, we use a trade the range system where we buy right as it bounces off the support level with a tight stop loss over there. And when it hits our profit target, we will exit uh, at this area. And the great thing about this strategy is usually you're risking $1 to make 3 to $4. So it's a really great risk to reward system. So every single day, I look at the markets, I look for these trade setups, trade the range, impulse pullback, and the bound system. And people ask me, um, Adam, how long do you take to find these trades every single day? And the answer is less than 30 minutes. How do I do that? Because I've programmed my screener to find these trades for me automatically. So in the trading course, in the course to come, you'll be getting all these trading uh, scripts that I've created that will help you to screen for trades every single day. So I'm going to show you very quickly how these uh, screeners work. So this is one of them I'm using. It's called TC2000, all right? And you can see over here, I have a library of all the different systems. There we go. We have got the bounce long system, the bounce short system, and so on and so forth. So these are the different systems that I use every single day. Uh, you don't have to use all of them. You can just use some of them to be really profitable. So for example, for this uh, 50 bounce long system, you can see that there's a specific formula that has been written over here to help you to screen the markets for these setups every single day. So it just takes about 30 minutes of my time. So for example, if I go to uh, 50, uh, bounce long, right? click on that. So immediately you'll scan the market and you'll show me all the stocks that are bouncing off the 50 moving average. For example, well, let me just change this setting to a bounce. I'm going to click on the first one and you can see immediately, uh, well, that one's not very nice. Let me click on this one. Okay, there we go, All right? So again, you can see that it is bouncing off the 50 moving average, right? So next one, K KR. And again, you can see it is uh, bouncing, bouncing off the 50 moving average, right? So every single day, it finds the stocks that are having that exact uh, system or setup you're looking for. And I'll teach you in the course exactly which ones to pick and which ones to avoid. We only pick the ones with the highest 
probability of winning. Okay, so with all these uh, trading systems, they'll tell you exactly uh, what to buy, when to buy, when to sell. Question people ask it would be, you know, so can I be right all the time? Can I win all the time? The answer is, of course not. There's no system that wins all the time. And you do not need to win all the time to make money. So what is the secret of a profitable trading business? The secret is really having a trading plan. Where in your trading plan, we always have an entry price, a stop loss price, and a target price, as I've mentioned many, many times. So when we enter a trade, when we use a good system, we have a 60 to 70% probability of having a winning trade, of hitting our profit target, and a 30 to 40% probability of having a losing trade. That is the reality of trading, okay? So you will win some, you will lose some. You just have to win more than you lose. And when you lose, you only lose a fixed percentage of your capital. Again, if you risk 2% of your capital, when you win, you need to win at least 4%. You always risk 1 to make 2 or more. So I've got some systems where I risk 1 to make 3 or 4. And I'll teach you those systems in this trading course. So think about it. If you do an average of 20 trades a month, and you have an average win rate of 60%, that means you have 8 losing trades and 12 winning trades in a month on average. Right? So every time you lose, you lose 2%. In this case, because you are risking 2% of your capital per trade. And when you win, you win 4% of your capital. Right? So your winning trades pull in 48%, your losing trades deduct 16%, your net return is 32% a month with a 60% win rate, okay? Now, there will be certain months where your win rate may drop to just 50%. Now, what if you're only right half the time, okay? You'll find that in a 20-trade sample, you have 10 wins and 10 losses. Again, each time you lose, you lose 2%. When you win, you win 4%. So again, 40% minus 20% is still a 20% return a month with just a 50% win rate. So the beauty of my trading system is you just have to be right half the time and you'll be making a really good return every month, okay? Now, what if your win rate drops to just 40%? Now, this sucks. But I can tell you that it does happen during certain periods, right? Where you're wrong more than you're right. So when that happens, you are getting 12 losses and eight wins in 20 trades. But this time again, you are down 24%, but you're up 32%. So net profit, you're still up 8% return a month. So again, even if you've got a win rate of 40%, you can still make money consistently if you manage your risk to return ratio and you manage your money well. And that's how we compound our money month to month, year to year, and achieve our financial goals uh, really fast. So I always say that trading is the perfect business. And trading is a business because... Like any business, you're buying and selling things for a profit. Now, in a business, you always have sales minus cost equals to profit. You can't have sales without cost. You need both. So similarly, in trading, a winning trade is a sales. A losing trade is a cost. So sales minus cost is your net profit. So when you look at it that way, trading is like any other business. So trading is a perfect business because number one, it's really flexible. You can do it from anywhere in the world and all you need is less than one to two hours a day. And once you master the skill like me, all you need is 30 minutes a day. And that's why I've got the entire day really free to do other stuff, spend time a lot, a lot of time with my family and I can teach, which is my passion. Okay, You can work from anywhere in the world, whether it's from a beach resort or from the jungles. Okay, as long as you've got an internet connection, you can trade, right? There are no employees to worry about. There's no rentals to pay. There are no competitors. Because, you know, the beauty about this business is after I teach you how to make money, it doesn't mean I make less money. We can both make money. So you're not my competitor, right? We are all trading together. Okay, it's recession-proof. So even in a down market, even if the economy collapses, we are still profiting because we are shorting the markets. The great thing about trading is that relatively compared to other businesses, it takes very little capital. In most businesses, to start a shop, a restaurant, you need at least $100,000, $200,000.
But in trading, you can start with an account as small as $3,000 account or $5,000 account, okay? And it's relatively low risk. If you start a business and the business fails, you lose everything, okay? But in a trading business, we only risk a small percentage of our capital, which is just 2% or even 1% of our capital. So even if you have 10 losses in a row, you're only down 20% of your capital and eventually you'll make it back, right? Because the wins will eventually be more than the losses. So in a short run, you may have small losses. In the long run, you always make money. Trading is the perfect business. So we have just covered le lesson one of the professional stock trading course level one. Let me tell you what's in store for the rest of the course, okay? So in lesson two, you'll be learning the secret to achieving consistent trading profits and basically how you trade like a casino where in the long run, the house always wins. And how do you develop and use a trading system that has an edge in the markets, that has a positive statistical expectancy. So in the long run, your business is always profitable. In lesson three, be learning how do you master technical analysis? How do you understand what is known as Dow theory and the principles of technical analysis? How do you identify trends? And when you trade trends, you must align the long-term trend with the medium-term trend with the short-term trend. And it must be aligned at different interval levels. You're going to learn all this stuff, right? How to understand support and resistance levels, supply and demand zones that will move the stock price. How do you master moving averages? In lesson four, we go deeper into technical analysis where you learn about how to use the right indicators to tell oversold and overbought conditions, the strength of the trend. How to use powerful candlestick patterns to know the, the, the sentiment of the day. Is the market likely to reverse the next day or to continue? You learn how to anticipate changes in trend with what is known as divergence patterns. And how do you analyze not just the stock, but the sector, the industry, and the market it has to be aligned in the right direction. Lesson five, we learn about position sizing. How do you calculate the number of shares to buy and how do you automate your trading business? So you don't have to be there all the time. The broker will buy and sell for you automatically and execute your orders. How do you leverage your capital using contract for differences, CFDs, as well as margin? Okay. And lesson six, you will learn the first trading system known as the bounce system. So in a bounce system, you learn about, again, the two candle reversal patterns, entry and exit rules, how do you identify wave patterns, how do you manage your trade once you're in the trade, and how do you screen for setups every day using my proprietary software that you'll be getting. And how do you identify the highest momentum stocks to buy and the lowest to sell. So all this we covered in level one of the course, okay? Uh, again, you get the entire system performance, so you know exactly how the system works. You get all these screening scripts, uh, but that's not all. In lesson seven, you'll be learning the psychology of winning traders. How do you condition yourself to trade optimally at your peak? Where you learn to manage your emotions, how do you manage temporary drawdowns of capital, which is inevitable? How do you program your mind to be a winning trader? using Neuro Linguistic Programming or NLP. Lesson eight, how do you develop a trading plan? Where you keep a trading journal just like a business and how do you choose the right stockbroker with the lowest commissions? Lesson nine, how do you use the charting software I've been talking about? How do you put in the moving averages? How do you plan and execute orders? Okay, and it's actually a bonus lesson 10, which is how do you trade the range? Which is one of my most powerful systems. And all this will be uh, in the next few lessons in Professional Stock Trading Course Level 1. So I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Adam Koo, may the markets be with you. Hi, so if you like the video, you can subscribe for more videos by clicking the subscribe button. If you want to find out more about our live training courses in Asia, go to wealthacademyglobal.com. For our online professional stock and forex trading courses, you can go to piranaprofits.com. So this is Adam Koo, and I'll see you soon.